Every spring and summer, consumers look forward to sweet Georgia watermelons at cookouts across the state and the nation. In Tifton, UGA researchers battle to stay out in front of diseases that could harm the crop and hurt melon producers. Unfortunately, one disease is making a comeback in Georgia, and it has one researcher concerned. Mark Wildman explains. You do not have to look far to see that this watermelon field in Berrien County has some trouble. Among the green growth of the vines, you can see that some have withered up and died. The problem here, and in some other fields in the area, is a disease called Fusarium wilt. It uh, basically attacks watermelon roots. As the roots grow out from the watermelon plant, the, uh, they come in contact with the organism, and the organism will infect the roots, and it basically kills the root back towards the crown of the plant. The problem makes its way to a field and survives in the soil. If the watermelon crop is planted in the same field the next season, the problem seems to get larger. It'll continue to kill more plants every year he plants seedless watermelons in this field. Berrien County Extension agent Tim Flanders has seen many cases of this in his county, and it has potential to hurt a very valuable crop. We grow about 1,800 acres of watermelons, and it, it's about six to seven, sometimes eight million dollars worth of gross income a year, so it's a pretty significant crop. The only bright spot to it is the disease breaks out in cool springtime temperatures, and once the thermometer hits into the 90s, it goes away. By then, though, significant damage could be done like in this field. If the whole field was like where we're at right here, it'd be a total loss. This is a cool weather uh, disease. Uh, we can only work with the disease basically in April, primarily when I do my tests. So what, what's, what's gonna die has probably already died. Um, the, the plants that have not become infected so far uh, will probably survive. Uh, I've been here about four years and uh, it seems to be spreading every year. Uh, we we here rotate watermelons, or try to, basically on a uh, three to four year rotation. Uh, this particular disease, though, happens to stay in the field. I think the recommend extension recommendations are seven year rotation, and uh, most of your watermelon growers in this area are 80 acres and above, minimum size. A lot of them are over 200 acres, and when you start talking a seven year rotation on 200 acres of watermelons, it takes a lot of cropland to be able to to be able to gear that kind of rotation. In the past, the industry had a handle on this disease. Melons were bred with resistance. But when market conditions caused growers to switch to seedless melons, the disease raised its ugly head. This disease was a big problem when there was no resistance that had been identified and they, the breeders eventually bred um, resistance uh, to Fusarium wilt race one into all the seeded watermelon lines and then everybody was growing seeded watermelons that had Fusarium wilt. Uh, race one resistance. Now since our, our shift has been mostly towards a seedless watermelon production, seedless watermelons don't have any resistance. It's very difficult to breed that resistance into seedless watermelon. As in any other commodity, the market drives production. And as long as varieties of melons are being produced without resistance, the problem will probably continue. And that will keep David Langston busy for the foreseeable future. For the Georgia Farm Monitor, I'm Mark Wildman.